Good morning and welcome to Herb Oracle Podcast, botanical divination with herbs, essences, flowers, and trees with your host, Herbal Marie. Let's start the day off pulling some oracle cards and getting a few messages. We can shoot the shiitake in a spiritual way-ish. And if you follow me on Instagram, I'll post a pic of the cards at Herb Oracle. Thanks so much for joining me. Here we go. Hey, what's up? It's Saturday night, so I thought I would do the Friday podcast. (laughs) TGI, what the fuck happened? Um, It's 845 on a Saturday night, and I have three piles in front of me for you. God, they're pretty. They're really pretty because there's black on top with the geometric figures. Um, I'm going to send you off with an essential oil. But what's so pretty is that the color of this jade green and this purple of another card are like jiven. So it's just so funny how like different combinations of different cards. I mean, this shouldn't surprise me, but it's just funny how like each week they really do look different to me. And I'm just looking at the backs. I was like, that's all I've seen so far because I like to be surprised too. And I mean, I think one of the best things about doing like a pick a pile reading for you with Oracle cards is that like, it's like a impromptu, like, I guess like actors probably enjoy like an impromptu type of thing. Like just as you go along, like you don't know what's going to, yeah, we like surprises. All right, so have you had any surprises this week? Good ones, bad ones? Don't fucking get me started. All right, here we go. Um, It's like one of those weeks you want to leave behind you. <clears throat> please, please, no more of this. No more of this. I don't understand um, where I went wrong. I need to get back to um, that book I was reading and those live streams I was doing, Flossie and Sade. I think I should probably pick up where I left off with that. I mean, the Course in Miracles is setting me straight. My heart is thankful. My mind is thankful. Uh, I just might, I need to maybe like tweak the how I'm manifesting a little little bit. But I've manifested some okay stuff this week. I mean, all my rabbits got homed. I mean, that was pretty amazing. And I don't know, that's about it. Okay, Um, we're going to do Pick a Crystal. I know you love these I love these if you can love plants and herbs and flowers and trees well it's only a hop skip and a jump away from loving rocks and gemstones and crystals so I'm going to pick Ooh, this, these cards are nicer than I remember I was thinking they were stiffer than this Woo-doo-doo-doo. this is Judy Hall's the crystal wisdom healing Oracle so yeah part of me absolutely wishes I was not sitting in this chair with you that I was getting into bed but but I just really I wanted to do a Friday I but then I went back to bed I just I just blew you off I'm so sorry (laughs) I blew everybody off but I was exhausted you guys it's just been an emotional roller coaster week you know good stuff bad stuff um the shenanigans that my ex-husband brought forth this week was reporting me for welfare fraud so that was fun i enjoy clearing my name thank you thank you i'm getting lots lots of practice just you know what else you got i hate to ask well i already know what's next he got himself an attorney so i'm assuming he's coming coming after me all right so when you know they're gonna be jerks, but you just gotta forgive them and love them anyways. That's of course the miracles talking. That's not me. <laughs> Here's your first one. Should I start over? Uh, no, we can't, because I've already picked an amazing crystal. The first pile has number 16, aqua marine. And it's rough. It's like not polished. It's almost kind of whitish. Like, it's not what you would think of when you think of aquamarine because you're, like, probably thinking of something polished that you buy in a little gift shop. This is, 
it almost just looks like a turquoisey gravel, white gravel stone. Middle pile crystal is rose quartz, number 15. All right, if we get 14 next, I'm gonna freak, freak out. No, 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 no. So rose quartz, maybe this middle pile is for those who um, need to open up their heart space a little bit more. Oh my gosh, all right, and number 50 is our last one. And it's char, charite, charite, charite? I'll spell it. C-H-A-R-O-I-T-E. Was, there was another one that was kind of fighting for it to come out, but charite won. And it, why am I still shuffling? There's no more piles, Sadie, put the cards away. Um, this is pretty. 50, it's number 50, and it's it's pretty, but it's ugly at the same time, although I look at it. Well, it's pretty because it's like purple and white, but there is like this, like, look like a cancerous black, like, cavity in the middle of it. So it's beautiful, but there's also a big old ugly spot in it at the same time. So maybe like this pile is like for people who's like, maybe seeing that um in their in themselves or in their life or in another person like yeah mostly beautiful but except for that big old fucking void of cancerous cavity it's like it, it looks like burnt kind of yeah there's some darkness in there but overall it's beautiful all right so here's your choices i'm gonna drink my tea and see if i can't pull myself together i feel very very scattered Maybe we should do the Damiana affirmations one more time this week. Um, our beautiful herb of the week. I'm gonna drink some cinnamon tea. It's like tiger something, Bengal tiger. It's very cinnamony. And decide which one sounds good. You can either go by number or by crystal. The numbers are 16, 15, 50. And pick a crystal, aquamarine, rose quartz or charite. This affirmation minute is brought to you by our herb of the week, Damiana, and I lovingly dedicate them all to you. Thank you. I am open to new loving relationships. I love myself completely. I indulge in sensual bliss. I delight in myself. I heighten my connection to magical energies and enhance my visions. I am at home in pleasure, passion, power, and psychic abilities. I am confident. I am open to new loving relationships. I love myself completely. I indulge in sensual bliss. I delight in myself. I heighten my connections to magical energies and enhance my visions. I am at home in pleasure, passion, power, and psychic abilities. I am confident. So be it. So your choices are aquamarine, rose quartz, or charoite. I looked on the internet. It's charoite. <laughs> I was close. I did okay. All right. So 16, 15, or 50 for my number nerds. Aquamarine, rose quartz, or charoite. I'm going with the last one myself. Only because like, yeah, like I often am like, oh, I really love this, but like I fucking hate this. <laughs> so I'm going with the last one, even though rose quartz would benefit me all day, every day. Um, aquamarine, I have an aquamarine with me every day, actually. It's like a really polished one. It's on my Metatron's cube in front of my iPad here that I use as my microphone. And um, yeah, I mean, I don't really think much about aquamarine to tell you the truth, it was a gift. <laughs> uh, 
And rose quartz, I wore. I used to wear it every day. I really felt like I needed it because my heart was completely closed down. Then I opened it enough to be satisfied and I kind of forgot about rose quartz. But yeah, the cheroite, definitely that blackness and that decay look, it calls to me. All right, so that's your choices. I probably should take a picture for the four people that follow me on Instagram for Herb Oracle. Um, all Every single episode is, is listed there pretty much. I think only like one time did I forget. There we go, there's a picture. I think my, my robe sleeve was in it. <laughs> I think one time I forgot to post pictures and I, or I put the cards away and then I was like, ah. And, uh, but anyways, I do post there. If you like the Damiana affirmations, those you can download on the Herbal Marie Patreon page. And other than that, I don't have anything to offer you except my company tonight. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird uh, being up this late doing a Herb Oracle podcast, but I sort of feel like it's a big F you to time in a lot of ways. Like, hey, I'll do Friday mornings, Saturday night if I want to. And tomorrow, if I want to get up on Sunday and record Mondays, I will. <laughs> like, I just feel like I think it's a good thing to just not follow any rules sometimes, especially when it comes to time. All right, so here's what I'm giving you today. You got a crystal, which that'll take a little while because those are, those are pretty in complicated cards in the book. There's a lot of information, but I think you'll like it. I'm giving you a crystal. The first one's aquamarine. You also get a flower whisper. Um, then I'm gonna get you smelling good with an essential oil. And then I'm gonna send you off with two friends and an affirmation for, I guess, the rest of your weekend. I was gonna say the, your weekend, but uh, what's up, slacker? Freaking weekend's basically over, loser. <laughs> Not for me, I still have a whole, like, most of the day tomorrow, which I'm gonna reset can finish resetting the house. I cleaned so freaking much today because it just had gotten to the point where it was giving me a little bit of like out of control anxiety. Like, okay, so when my life doesn't feel, um, it feels a little out of hand, the best thing I could do is clean my space and make sure there's no clutter around. That really does help my energy and me emotionally. All right, so. You'll get a soul flower, and your other friend is an, an eco heart, nature, spirit, or an, or an animal. That should be fun. And then there's an affirmation. Oh my gosh, can you tell I'm tired? Yeah, I didn't realize it until I sat down, and but it's okay, because I don't actually need to be here. <laughs> I'll just step aside and let my higher self run the rest of the show like usual. All right, if you picked aquamarine, First of all, I'm surprised I didn't go with this one because it's number 16. One plus six equals seven. That's my life path number. If you've never figured that out, there's life path number calculators on the internet. You just basically get the number by adding all the individual numbers up in your birth date. And then you reduce it down to a single digit and that is your life path number, but it is usually interesting um, to look into what that means. And if nothing else, that number will probably start to stalk you a little bit. Now this aquamarine comes in with a message, if you pick the first pile, with a message of hope. So aquamarine has been used as a healing gem for a real long time. And yes, it is associated with the sea and also with stimulating psychic abilities. So our herb of the week, Damiana, is like, yes, I want you to be at home and comfortable and confident in your psychic abilities. So this is a good crystal to wrap it up for us this week. And aquamarine was also believed to protect against seduction. So no seducing me. All right, um, here's your message if you picked aquamarine. You are deeply intuitive, but you need to assess this realistically. So 
do not be seduced by vivid imaginings or wishful thinking or you'll love this word spiritual claptrap that's right you need to not be seduced by that spiritual claptrap use your imagination to create what is for your highest good and well-being follows if you fall into depression remember that hope shines into the darkest places so this is i'm now i'm really surprised i didn't pick this pile because this pile obviously has messages for me yes like always you can be greedy and stay and get all the messages from all the piles because i'm already i'm already being greedy so it's like what was i saying yeah i need to kind of use my imagination to create for my highest good. I need to tweak my manifestation. Apparently, apparently I need to hang out with Flossie and Sade a little bit more because I want more well-being. It's just sort of going back and forth all the time. Like, ah, good manifestation, bullshit manifestation, good, bullshit, good, bullshit. It's like, okay, can we just focus in on the good stuff because it's getting exhausting. Now, what can happen is, you know, I get into a fantasy or a wishful thinking or a spiritual claptrap and I can get seduced and thrown off. And uh, so it's got, you got to really maintain your focus, maintain your faith, maintain your hope. So here's the message from Aqua Marine. Release self-defeating programs. Mm yeah this whole self-sabotage stuff you've got to release your self-defeating programs I, there was a meme the other day and i actually I, I needed to see it myself and i shared it i shared it too um it was self-love includes not sabotaging love that's directed towards you or something like that but it's basically like we defeat ourselves all the time. There is no outside enemy. It is within us where we experience defeat. It's like we pull the rug out from under ourselves so often. So we need to stop. We need to notice if and when we're doing that and release these self-defeating programs, self-sabotage low self-esteem, talking shit about yourself, let that go. What you need to do is listen to your inner guidance and be, but be, but be objective. Okay, that was the whole like, don't get seduced by vivid imaginings or wishful thinking or <laughs> spiritual claptrap. Yeah, you need to still be objective. So there's also a message from Aquamarine that maybe you want to accept what's on offer. There might be something coming your way that's like, oh, that's not, that's pretty good. Maybe I'll, I will accept that offer. Uh, but you know, use your objectiveness, be realistic. Watch out for idle gossip um, and just, you know, be smart about things. Tie up loose ends before moving on remain emotionally detached, avoid procrastination. And yeah, Aqua Marine has some just pretty, pretty down to earth stuff. Oh, here's one I wanna hear. Success may come in a court case. Stay positive and remember your family. So you can remember them. Does that still mean you have to eat dinner with them? I don't know, but you can remember them. All right, so Aquamarine, the first pile, there is no reason to lose the hope in your heart since well-being is a state of mind. You never have to lose hope because this is a state of mind. This is an attitude, like the attitude of gratitude, all that good stuff. Hope, too, you never need to lose sight of it well-being is a state of mind so this number 16 aquamarine it's about seeing beyond consensual reality or illusion 
Like, yeah, this might be the matrix or the world that everybody's agreed upon, but you don't have to only be limited by it. You can see through it. You can see beyond it. So this is a very high frequency um, crystal. Uh, this aquamarine will work with your chakras, the throat, third eye, and will help align all of them. And the timing is Aries, Gemini, Scorpio, and Pisces. So this first pile has a message of hope. What are you hoping for? What are you really wanting? What do you really want to manifest? All right, your flower whisper says, meditation doesn't mean you have to sit still. It can be a quiet walk in a garden. So maybe accept the, an offer, like a, you've been hoping, you've been wishing, something's coming up. You know, this whole like action, inspired action, not that you're just like being flighty or not thinking things through, but if you do have a sense, a realistic sense to you, and you are trying to manifest good things in your life, at some point you're going to get a chance to walk, to walk on that, right? So it can be a walking meditation into your, into your dreams, your new dreams, your new reality, the one that you prefer. All right, let me see here what, um, I feel like next I wanna pull over your soul flower. All right, I wonder why, because it was rosemary, because I wanted clarity, that's what she's bringing forth. So yeah, like I was trying to see like, well, what is aquamarine? Like that was a lot of different kinds of messages, but I, but I feel like, you know, it was that one little one liner, accept an offer or accept something that's being offered. Like, I feel like something is coming good is coming into fruition, an opportunity or a chance to maybe do something a little different in your life. You can still maintain your state of peace, your state of hope your Zen, right? You can walk into this new thing feeling very much grounded and clear and um, yeah, very much in alignment. So Rosemary comes in with clarity and she says, who are you really? Rosemary infuses the body with warmth and vitality, bringing security and clarity to the spirit, especially when it has lost connection with the physical world. Rosemary helps you to feel fully embodied and grounded so that you are better able to remember who you truly are. That's very interesting because like here your meditation too, it's saying, you know, it can be a walk in a garden. Like if you're getting so uh, high, like higher in frequency, uh, just like you literally feel like you're floating out of your body or you're dizzy or, you know, like you might need to ground, get back in your body. It's not time to leave it quite yet. <laughs> um, if you're having trouble making the decision, getting clear, clear on that, having your reasoning and logic because you're just too dreamy to wishful thinking, Rosemary is saying, come back into your body. Aquamarine is saying, yeah, be a little logical with your decisions. Absolutely. Hmm. Interesting. And then Rosemary too is saying like, well, hey, if you're not sure what you want, here's, let's bring in some more clarity, but you'll probably feel more clear when you get back in your body. Yeah, when you've lost connection to the physical world because you're just living in your head. This tea is really good, you guys. It's so cinnamony. Oh my God. So anyways, that's your message, I think. <laughs> hey, you're going to smell great. You're going to smell great though because it's bergamot. It is bergamot, this limey, green, citrusy, um, coming in with a message of valued uplift and complexity okay now I don't feel so so bad because like this this uh, 
these cards, Rosemary and Aquamarine and now Bergamot too, validating this for me. Like I was like, well, which one's the message? Like there was like a lot coming in there. And Bergamot too is just confirming that with this message of complexity. And yeah, that means that you do, you do have a lot going on within you and around you. And you are going to have to gain that sense of grounded clarity so that you know what you want to do and what you don't want to do. You don't want to be seduced by wishful thinking or spiritual claptrap. Honest to God, you guys, are you wondering what claptrap means? I feel like we've looked at before. I can almost say that we have, but let's see here. Clap trap. I hope this doesn't pick up any pictures that I don't want to see. Um, clap trap means pretentious, insincere, or empty language. So spiritual clap trap would be like empty spiritual language. Like when someone's just using the right words with you, like, oh, that sounds good and enlightening and it's but it's just empty language they don't really have the energy to back it up they don't have, it's like not i don't know do you ever have that experience it's like a boyfriend who's like says the right things to you in a message but then like you get you get together with them and you're like what the hell dude like you talk nice in a message but it, it don't seem something don't seem right clap trap that's what that is. All right. So anyways, don't get seduced by spiritual claptrap. All right. Here's what Bergamot has to say. My worth is not determined by the opinions of others, but rather by the value I place on my own happiness. Ooh. So remember how Aquamarine said something about depression? What did it say about depression? Um, I feel like it said something about depression. If you fall into depression, remember that hope shines into the darkest places. So the flip side of Bergamot is melancholy, overspending, danger, right? Like when you're not feeling so good about yourself. So you just like spend money on spiritual claptrap. But like really what you needed was a meditative walk in the garden. Really what you needed was a genuine uplifting moment with yourself. What you truly need to do is invest in your own self worth and your own self value. So repeat after me, says Bergamot. My worth is not determined by the opinions of others, but rather by the value I place on my own happiness. So you've got to prioritize your own happiness and literally not give one stinking rip what anyone else thinks about you. You just can't at this point. Sometimes you need to just do what you need to do for you to keep yourself happy, to keep yourself hopeful, to keep your ass out of depression, to maintain that sense of clarity, to maintain that presence so that you can continually remember who you are and who you are and who you are and who you are and not be seduced and romanced by the egoic shinings of the world, which is, yes, a lot of times spiritual claptrap. It's just completely empty. There's no sustenance to it. All right, so anyways, that's your message. I'm sending you off now with a nature spirit from the Eco Heart Oracle. I'm sending you off with a raven. And the raven comes in with a message of loyalty. I'm so jealous that you have a raven. <laughs> Dang it, I should have picked this pile. Um, but this message of loyalty, you need to be loyal to yourself and to your spiritual journey. And yes, remember your family, sure. But um, yeah, the raven wants to say to you, 
Be loyal to yourself, your family, and your heart, not to collecting and hoarding objects. So now that takes us back to Bergamot, who was talking about overspending. Okay, you've been kind of bummed, so you're like, I'll buy myself some new earrings. <laughs> I did just buy myself some new earrings yesterday, but they're gorgeous and you would approve. They're like shiny gold mandalas and they are so lightweight, you can hardly feel them. And and yeah, it was kind of like Happy Valentine's Day, Sadie, you know, they're only 20 bucks. <laughs> and I was supporting a small business who gave me a free battery for my watch and a little pair of pearls little studs like they were giving away free gifts so i kind of felt like like i wanted to spend some money in there and then like there actually was something beautiful so i was like okay cool anyways i wasn't being a raven but that is that is what the raven reminds you of you see a raven will will just literally hoard and junk up its nest with shiny objects, useless objects. Like the raven is a really cool bird, but it has a dark side. And it is it is it's being um, attracted to shiny claptrap. He has no use for this shit. They just clutter the nest. So anyways, make sure that you are loyal to yourself, to your heart, to your love, to your family, not things not objects I've thrown so much stuff out this week it's like been liberating I really want nothing around me like I mean just a few beautiful things and then I'm good and even then I have to know that my loyalty should not be with things so my beautiful things now though are are not just things to me because they're rocks and crystals and you know I'm trying to just have things that push come to shove I can return them to nature so yeah the raven um, wants you to be loyal to yourself and to your heart so clean your nest no hoarding for you get rid of things that are not needed clean the house take stock of what you really need and what you really don't need and that will help you tap into that rosemary energy of clarity. Physically cleaning your nest will help bring you into your body. So if you've been a little too, as Aquamarine would say, you've been getting seduced by, by spiritual claptrap and dreaminess and stuff like that, do something very physical. Clean your nest. Um, clean your nest. Clean your house clean, you know, declutter, reset your space so you can reaffirm your loyalty to what really matters. What, as Bergamot would say, what you truly value. Remember the key words for Bergamot was valued, uplift, and complexity. So make sure you're only keeping with you what uplifts you and what is valued. Whew. So I guess that's it. Let me get your affirmation. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't want to leave this. I don't want to leave this reading. Now I really don't because your affirmation um, light design on this card matches the emerald green of the bergamot. So now it's become very, very pretty. And it's, and it's all about vitality. So yeah, as you uplift into this new energy, as you take a walking meditation in a garden, as you get back into your body and remember to ground and feel aliveness and remember who you truly are, as you give up the unnecessary materialistic things that are zapping your energy, whether you realize it or not, clutter zaps your energy. A messy space does not give you any extra energy. It sucks it out of you. Clean up your space and feel the difference. So anyways, you're ending with vitality. And here is your affirmation. <laughs> I am a being of light. 
I accept the divine energy in my body and every one of my cells regenerates. Nice. So anyways, yeah, what do you really, what kind of stuff do you really even want and definitely you don't need if you understand you are a being of light? Yeah, Rosemary's saying get fully embodied, right? If you've lost connection with the physical world, but when it says be able to remember who you truly are, you should remember that you are a being of light. You are light in that body. And because you are, you can accept the divine energy flowing through your body, flowing in your body, enlivening your body. Your body is nothing without your spirit of light, your being of light in it. So every one of your cells regenerates. It can and it does. So anyways, it's a good message for you, you know, to uplift your energy so that you can really step into that of who you truly are. And as you do that, you really need less shiny things because you yourself remember and realize that you are the shining one. All right, are we ready for the second pile? It's um, el it's the next day. <laughs> it's uh, eleven fifty-seven on Sunday. I'm I'm finishing Friday's podcast. Uh, yeah, sorry for the first half of this podcast when I was asleep. I love you. Um, I went to bed. I was like, wow, this really sucks for me. Good night. <laughs> Okie doke. So our second crystal that you could choose from is rose quartz. And this is actually in the shape of a heart, kind of like not the best shaped heart, but they tried. It is. It's like it's carved, you know, it's, it is the shape of a heart, but it's not perfect. This heart, I'm just, I'm just telling you how I see it. It's not perfect. And I think that might be like a little bit of this message if you chose Number 15, one plus five equals six. That is a great number for love and compassion and harmony. And love, yeah. So love is not perfect according to your egoic definitions. Now, unconditional love is, but we'd be high and mighty if we even get a little lick of it in our day. But we're striving towards unconditional love. We really are striving for towards being unjudgmental and ooh and unrestrictive with our love, right? So hey, who cares if it's not perfect? You can still extend love out. You can still let it flow to you. Like, yeah, bitch, I know you're not perfect and I love you anyways because I see you for who you truly are. And even more than that, I know who I truly am and I am here to be the light, to be the love, to be the truth, to be the I am that I am and that which I am is God, you know? And in that type of uh, mind frame, which is probably one that you're not gonna tell people about, <laughs> it's really super easy to just let the love flow and let it flow to everything and everyone, even if it's not a perfect heart shaped. So I love that about this rose quartz. So it's number 15. It's got a blue border, which means it is a healing stone. It's got the healing vibration. And rose quartz is full of unconditional love and infinite peace. It draws loving relationships to you. It helps heal past emotional traumas and provides support during a crisis. So here is what you need to understand if you pick the middle pile, number 15, the rose quartz, you need to know that you are a beautiful soul 
who has infinite peace deep within and enormous empathy. So if you're, the Course of Miracles was talking about this a couple lessons ago for me. If you're up in the ego thoughts, in the ego mind, it's not comfortable there, it's stressful, it's anxiety, you're hateful, you're judge, judgeful, <laughs> whatever. Uh, you're viewing through the eyes of separation and it's ugh. Now, what you need to do is sink deeper. You need to go below those thoughts into the God mind, into your heart space, into your inner sanctuary. There's a lot of different beautiful ways we can put this into words. Deep within you is the peace that you are always looking for and that you always have access to. It's like so freaking ridiculous to know that like, okay, here I am going crazy in my mind right now. It's like, it's ironic and ridiculous to know that at the same time, there's a place within you that has the peace and the love that would feel so good right now, but it is your conscious choice. It's your free will, whether you stay in ego mind or sink below the storm, sink below those waves deep, deep down into your ocean within where you have deep peace, infinite deep peace. There is no limit. There is no limit. So get to know yourself in this lifetime as the beautiful soul that you are. It will draw, attract, bring loving relationships to you. It will help heal your emotional traumas. And it will be the life support, life vest, life jacket, whatever. It will save you knowing that beautiful place of peace inside of you. It will save you on your darkest days. So relationships is the theme here. Relationships are where you learn your soul lessons. Yeah, your soul lessons. I have a book, it's upstairs, I think. I think my daughter's maybe reading it every once in a while. It's by Sonia Coquette. It's 22 soul lessons. And it's really, it's an interesting read because we do have soul lessons and we learn them best with other people. That's what, the, that's what relationships are, are doing, are here for us. They're making available the opportunity to learn your soul lessons. So for example, in my life, this stuff going on with my ex-husband, it would really behoove me to just stop and reflect and ask, what is the the biggest soul lesson I am learning here? What is the lesson? Like, I want to take it. I want to learn it. What do I have to learn from this situation that I have attracted? So I'm taking responsibility for it and being open to learning my soul lesson that I asked for. We've got, I've got to get out of that victim uh, perspective, victim mentality, what have you, victimhood. We've got to escape victimhood and we do that by taking responsibility, by saying, okay, even if you only want to do it hypothetically, that's okay. You say, all right, well, let's say I did ask for this and I did attract this and there's something in this motherfucker that I'm supposed to see. What is it? What does my soul want to learn? Now here's some more good advice from Rose Quartz. Heal heartbreak or abuse and dissolve toxic emotions and pain that prevent you from giving and receiving love. You have the power, you have power to love unconditionally and to support others. So it's so important for you to heal your past trauma. It's so important for you to forgive so that you can feel peace. And you're like, but I don't wanna forgive my abuser. I don't want you to either. But here's the thing, I want you to feel peace. And so it is through forgiveness that you will feel peace. Don't you worry about that son of a bitch. All energy will be returned, okay? I promise you that. Everybody reaps what they sow and harvest time is coming. 
But for you, right here, right now, you must heal your heartbreak. You must dissolve the toxicity that has accumulated in your emotional and physical bodies from that pain. It's blocking you from giving love. It's blocking you from receiving love. It's creating dis-ease in your body. So you owe it to yourself to look into how you're going to start to forgive. And honest to God, the best way I feel like is trying to not even figure it out yourself. Just say, you know what, spirit, I'm giving it over to you. You know what, higher self, you know what, Jesus, you know what, Ganesha, like it don't matter who you want to give it to, but give it to your guides. Give it to the Holy Spirit. Just say, I need help. I hand this over to you. Please undo undo this heartbreak for me like it's a bunch of knots undo these knots please i'm i have to i have to heal i don't know how to do it so i'm just going to let you hold my abuse in your hands holy spirit and could you please help me and in that moment with your willingness it will get done it will get undone <laughs> really that's the truth it will get undone and it's going to dissolve so these toxic emotions that have seemed so solid in you, like it's like I don't they're like they're never gonna go away. That's what it seems like. I'm always gonna hate. I'm always gonna hurt. It just seems like that is gonna be your forever moment. But once you become willing to be like, I want to feel peace. I want the power to love unconditionally. I want peace. I want the peace of God within me. Like I'm so tired of carrying this around. That willingness will make it happen for you. So what do you need to do? Forgive yourself. See, a lot of times when we have trauma or had bad things happen to us, we are really, the person we need to forgive first is ourself. And I've done this. I've literally said to myself, I am so sorry that I let that happen to you, that I let that happen to me, that I let that happen to us, right? I just talk to myself like that. I am so sorry. And in that moment, I forgive myself. So forgive yourself and allow yourself to dissolve these toxic emotions and allow yourself then to be more open to receive love. And then you will be open, more open to give love. The flow of love will happen for you. Love and beauty will approach you. It will draw loving relationships to you. But when you're in your state of pain and trauma and hurt, you are only going to attract more abuse because that's what you're a vibrational match to. So let's attract more love and beauty by forgiving ourselves and by connecting with spirit. Now, Rose Court says loneliness is at an end. So it's good news to get this crystal today. Um, loneliness is, is also dissolving for you. Emotional blockages dissolve. Do not accept blame. Okay, that is why you must forgive yourself. Do not accept blame. Do not blame anybody. It's just time to let it go, all of it. Recognize that unconditional love and friendship draw exactly the right people to you. Once you love yourself, you can give and receive love from others. But you gotta love yourself first. And once you do, then you can give and receive love from others. So Rose Quartz is here to say support is available. So if you feel like you're in a crisis right now, all types of crisis, it don't matter what time. If you feel like that, then support is available. Unconditional love is the greatest gift you can give to yourself or another. So unconditional love is where it's at today. So this 
crystal, the rose quartz, is all about the heart chakra. It's got a medium to high frequency depending on the clarity of the stone. The timing is Taurus and Libra, and the soul path is radiating unconditional love. I mean, I want this so bad, you guys. I really do. I just, I am so tired of 3D interactions and relationships and and like it said, like guilt and shame and hurt and trauma and oh, like aren't you just bored with it? <laughs> like, oh, this again. Um, you know, and it just feels so much better to have love flowing all the time. No more agreements, no more defining things. I just can't participate in that anymore. I just really want to flow love to everyone and extend God's love, which that's what unconditional love is, extend it equally to all because that is who I am. So your flower whisper says, a comfort zone is a beautiful place, but nothing ever grows there. So here's the deal. You've become very comfortable in your trauma, in your hurt, in your loneliness, in your isolation, in your separation, in your love drought. That's what it is, man. You have literally pinched yourself off from giving and receiving love because your ego has convinced you that it's safer to do that. Well, you're really stifling your own personal growth by staying boop, boop, safe, right? <laughs> Those were quotes. <laughs> it's not safe to stay in that place where you have no water, okay? Like you've, you've convinced yourself that you're comfortable there, but like you're trying to make your little limited place beautiful, but you're not growing, you're not learning your soul lessons. So even if it scares you to step into more unconditional love and forgiveness and self-acceptance and it's like, I don't know, well, guess what? You will, you will be thanking yourself and maybe me, you're welcome. You will be thanking the experience after you kind of allow yourself to move out of this comfort zone that you've created. I mean, I do it too. I do it too. Um, so I'm not blaming. We will accept no blame or give no blame today. But, you know, it is a good suggestion. Love more, even if it takes you out of your comfort zone. Unconditionally love more. Okay, you're going to have to figure that out. Now let's see how you're going to smell. Your essential oil is pine. Woo! So you'll be smelling fresh. Now, here's the thing, and I love this so much. Pine is all about sacred unity, honor, wisdom. She's like, she's in the pine needles. She has got Native American beadwork, necklace, chest plate. She's got red lines painted on her face. I know it seemed like a war. It seems like you've been in darkness so long. Right, so the, the idea of peace, infinite love, not judging people, not holding on to past trauma, that really can feel like a fairy tale. Like, I don't know about this, Sadie, but you owe it to yourself to try. So Pine says, when I wisely seek to find common ground with those I would otherwise consider enemies, I discover peace. So it's like, if I can love this mother trucker unconditionally and forgive him and find common ground with him, I don't have to be his best friend. Oh, we're not friends. However, I will release the shackles that this situation has caused me to feel. I will discover peace when I, in my wisdom, seek to find common ground. What does that mean? That means we're both God's children. That's it. That's all the common ground you need to have with that son of a bitch. <laughs> like you don't have to be in people's lives to forgive them and release them and bless them in a way that's unconditional. You would extend it to anyone and everything. It's your hatred to them. It's your tra traumatic connection to, the, to them that keeps 
you tie to them and it keeps you feeling horrible. You, when you forgive somebody, you release them out of your experience. It actually has nothing to do with like liking them or condoning, nothing. It's getting them the fuck out of your energy field. Sorry to take it down a notch, but that's what forgiveness does. It releases you. You will have freedom. You will have peace. You will have the peace of mind to not think about them anymore. Like people that hurt you don't want you to ever forgive them because in their demented minds, they know that in your unforgiveness, you guys are chained forever. You are, they have control over you. They know that you'll always be thinking about them because of what they did to you and it's sick. And the only thing that you can do, the best thing you can do is free yourself from them. And the way to do that is forgiveness. So you need to start looking at forgiveness differently. It's not anything weak on your part. It's not condoning on your part. It's not giving them a free ride on, like it's you taking back your power by cutting the cords and burning that connection away from them, freeing yourself and finally feeling the peace that you deserve. You should never have to think of them ever again. And that's what forgiveness will allow you to do. So anyways, when you wisely seek to find common ground with those sons of guns, and all that is is, hey, we're of the same source. You know, we come from the same one source. There, that, that's even more general. That's it. That's as much common ground as you need, okay? They are no longer given that that label of your enemy. See, that's actually a very honor, like, ooh, that's putting them up on a pedestal. I hate him. He's my enemy. Look how, look how high that pedestal. That's all I can focus on whenever I give somebody that label. They get so much of my attention. It's ridiculous. It's a game. It's a sick game. So understand that there's a smarter way to play this game. And that is through forgiveness. That is through discovering peace within you, as Rose Quartz really, really wants you to do. So you're getting a flower and then an eco heart spirit and then an affirmation. Your flower is ladies slipper. So this pine does wanna talk about how this has felt like war within your mind and quite possibly within your life. I mean, this is where I'm not downplaying the crisis that you have had or that you currently feel. However, you need to know that support is here. Spirit is here. Connection is here. It's, it's going to take, it's going to take you through a little walk out of your comfort zone. But as you walk out of your comfort zone, you realize that your comfort zone was actually damaging to you. And as you walk out of it into unconditional love and forgiveness, you might as well just do a course in miracles with me at this point. You reconnect. You reconnect with your heart space and with your support system. So Lady Slipper says, yeah, when you are feeling weary and exhausted and disconnected from your earthly pursuits, Lady Slipper says, I can help you restore your soul's connection to your physical body. So Lady Slipper will help infuse your daily life with guidance and intuition directly from the divine source so that you can fully enjoy and participate in life, right? So you can get out of your comfort zone and actually grow in your life and participate in your life inhabit your body, right? Actually own this existence and explore your sensual body and walk the path your soul intends. So it's like, what is the lesson here? What does your, your soul signed up for this, I guess. That's what I understand, right? Hard to believe, but 
when we can even just hypothetically say, all right, fine, I wanted this experience, there's something to learn here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to listen to this unconditional loving guidance coming from within me and walk this path that my soul wanted because there's something here to learn and grow. And the more you continue on your practice of forgiveness, you will grow by leaps and bounds. And then you'll get more practice and then you'll grow some more, but it feels really good to walk this path. This is what your soul intended. So take, these, take this advice from Pine and Lady Slipper and Rose Quartz and do your work first by forgiving yourself and then by opening up your heart to receive more love so that you can focus on the peace within. Close your eyes to this world and go within. All right, let's see who your nature spirit is. It's Woof. It's Woof with Family Clan. Now this is very, very interesting that we've been talking about trauma and forgiveness and things. And Woof actually is just gonna absolutely nail it by saying you are encouraged to repair your to repair your broken relationships repair broken relationships with family members however if that is not safe then it is time to find a new pack a new family who will protect you and support your dreams and that's exactly what i was trying to explain with forgiveness Forgiving someone does not mean that you have to have them in your life and be like, oh, I forgive you. Let's, let's go to Perkins. No, no. Forgiving them is getting them out of your mind. Forgiving them is setting your, you free. Forgiving them does not mean that you have to be with them ever again. And, and, and that's the thing, even if you're not with them, if you're not forgiving them, then you are keeping them in your mind all the time. So it's like you're with your, your abuser all the freaking time because he's in your mind or she's in your mind. So Wolf says, yeah, I just want to tell you again, forgive them. Hey, if you, and if it's not a big deal and you can still be family good, but sometimes you need to find a new family. Sometimes you gotta find a, a new pack and that's okay. And that's what's best for you. And you owe it to your new pack to do your forgiveness work so you're not carrying your old baggage into the new pack. So really, I feel like this middle pile with Rose Quartz is saying do your healing work absolutely 100% and keep on doing it. It takes time, but it's okay. And as you open your heart to receive more love, you can give more love and you will attract the right pack, the new wolf pack for you with your energy, with your vibration. You'll learn your lessons, don't you worry. There ain't no way around them. Um, but learn them because if not, you're gonna have to come back and try it again. So just get out of your comfort zone with the intentions that, you know what? I'm gonna learn my lessons this time and I'm gonna discover peace. And you're ending with the Healing Energy Oracle affirmation. It's called ME, M-E. And it says, I allow serenity to reign in me. The love I have for myself invites harmony to settle within my being. I listen to, honor, and strive to fulfill the needs of my soul. So <laughs> this just ties it all in, takes us back to Pine. Pine sa actually says the word honor. One spelled American, one spelled British, <laughs> but it's the same word, honor. You've got to honor yourself enough to heal yourself. You've got to listen to your needs, your soul needs. What does your soul need to learn this lesson of unconditional love, to feel peace? Honor that sacred place within you, that place of wisdom 
that you can go to. That's where you want to reside more and more. Your ego mind will hate this mother trucker to the end if you allow it, but you have to know that is not who you are. Who you truly are is a being of light and love and peace and serenity. Unconditional frequency that flows within you. So the more you can get into there, the more, the more you will discover peace. The more you listen to that, the more you will indeed fulfill the needs of your soul. And the path that your soul intended will be walked upon. And that is truly where you want to grow. So a good break to take right now is to get on either Spotify or YouTube or wherever you listen to music and look up Netta Boyne and the song called Nothing Else. <laughs> so if I, if I could have musical interludes in this podcast, I would play Netta Boyne, N-E-D-A-B-O-I-N, Netta Boyne, Nothing Else. So anyway, that's a good song to listen to right now. Um, thoughts though, this while I was, well, thoughts while I was thinking is, um, you know, it does take practice to get into your heart space when you've lived in your mind so long. And I'm not making excuses for people that have been traumatized or live in like bad situations and stuff, but, but I know that this happens. It's like in order to escape the bad scene that you've got gotten yourself into, you do live in your mind, I feel like a lot more, like as an escape, as reprieve, you know. For me, for like being unhappily married for like years upon years upon years upon years upon years, I would always have like a fantasy lover in my head, you know, as an escape, like, Um, And it could even just be like imagining a a man that was nice to me in that moment. Do you know what I mean? So like it is hard to give up that. It is. It's kind of like delusion in a way. That fantasy getting out of your mind and in more of your heart space. And I think that's kind of what it meant by getting out of your comfort zone. So you've created this like fantasy world in your head or protective space. And it could very well be like. A space where you don't let anybody in like it's safer for me to have my fantasy boyfriend than a real boyfriend right so it's like um getting out of our heads and into our hearts I guess my point is I get that like why it would take so much practice like and it's like well I got in my heart but then there I'm back in my head again yeah it's okay that you did that because you know you've been doing it for a real long time so keep practicing and and keep sinking down into the love and the peace that you truly are. And I know from my own personal experience, eventually those fantasies do dissolve. You know, like as you do your work and you get into a better vibrational stance and you know, you are attracting better things, you don't have to always be living in your head. Like your life actually starts to get better to and it gets easier and easier and easier to connect with rose quartz in your heart all right so anyways we made it to the final pile should i finish it today or wait till tonight jesus said <laughs> i am glad that i went to bed last night because i'm pretty sure i was like talking like this and um so anyways so sorry about that all right so this is cherite This is our final crystal that you could pick from. It's number 50. It's beautiful, molted purple and white, except for that black crater in the center. So this is a very interesting stone. I'm excited to get to know this crystal. Let me open up the book here. Judy Hall's awesome guidebook. Good Lord, she did a good job. Number 50. Cherowite is all about wound healing. So yeah, it looks like a wound. 
And this might be a great reading to like spin off of the, the Rose Quartz one. Mm. So much honey in my tea. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, so if you're getting, if you're reaping the benefit of all three crystals today, good. Because Cherowite provides deep physical and emotional healing. Transmuting negative energy, it converts disease, dis ease, she has that word chunked up, dis hyphen ease, dis ease to wellness. With its assistance, you recognize that your greatest trauma is also your most profound gift. Accept it with grace. Cherowite re-energizes, heals, and integrates dualities, healing past life disease carried into the present life. So yeah, let's just do our healing work on all levels, if nothing else, because we don't want to come back. Maybe you do want to come back. I don't. Um, I'm done. I'm done with 3D life, like super freaking done. And so, if I if I want to walk my talk on that, then I have to accept everything as a gift, even my trauma. So this message of Cherowite says deep fears and schisms pervade your being. I don't know that word. S-C-H-I-S-M-S. -S. It's like prisms, but with a S-C-H. Deep fears and schisms. I guess we'll just put that on the list with spiritual claptrap. <laughs> Anyways, deep fears. I, I know what that is. Pervade your being. You may not feel that you belong on earth. Alienation and insecurity lie beneath a deceptively calm surface. You are subtly driven by other people's thoughts and programs rather than your own. Your autonomic nervous system may be malfunctioning, so if so, it needs recalibrating. Okay, so this message for our last pile with Cherowite, it's about you needing to take control, okay? Like you need to control your mind, your get your fears out of you, recalibrate your system. Um, we've all been in a mind training program our entire lives. Society, schools, churches have indoctrinated us to no end, our families, everything. It's time to take control. It's time to clear, heal, and retrain your mind. That is truly why I pimp out the Course in Miracles to everyone I know because I see this need in everybody. I don't know if the Course in Miracles is going to be right for everybody, but it's the best, most powerful mind training program that I know of because you have been trained, but it hasn't served you. You need to empty out your mind and retrain it so that you can have the vision that your soul needs you to have, wants you to have. You are undergoing a vibrational change, creating links to higher realities. Visions of past lives suggest ways to redress karma personally and collectively. So if you've been tapping in to your past lives, you know, understand that it's trying to share information with you and let you know what you karmically do have to take care of and it's like sometimes things happen in your life you're like how that why did this happen well it's like it just something you've brought in with you so re redress it and you know create those links and then use them to your advantage and do your healing work and heal your past lives Heal your lineage. Help heal the collective. Like, if you got time to do it, do all the healing that you can do. I've really put in the time. Like, I, if I get caught up with my own healing, I, like, heal for the collective. I heal for my past. I heal for shit I don't even know what I'm healing for, but I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> 
So in accepting the present moment as perfect, you create the space to heal. So just all the time, quit judging your now moment and just own it as being perfect. It is what it is. Enjoy every now moment. And if you can stay in the now moment, you really do sense and experience that perfection because you know, you're not dipping into the past, you're not judging, you're not getting anxious, being distracted by the future. You're staying right here, right now, in this present moment. And it is a gift to create a space that you can heal. So stay here in this perfect moment with me. Just accept the present moment as perfect. This must be how it's supposed to be because it is. So this Cherowite is a very high, high, high frequency. It helps all the chakras. It Timing is any. It's like, wow, why don't we all have this stone? The soul path that Cherowite will help us get on is service to humanity, healing the wounds of the past. So do your healing work in the biggest, grandest way. And, you know, say, I heal for myself and I heal for the collective. I heal my past lives and all my lineage. I heal. I am healed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's see what our flower whisper from Tina T. Ames says. It says, don't be like the rest of them, my friend. Yeah, don't be like the rest of them who are hell-bent on not healing, who are condemning this present moment, who are just looking for ways to complain. Don't be like the rest of them. Be okay where you're at right now and know that in your acceptance, you're, you're creating a space that you can heal and help others heal too. So this really is service to the all. Let's see how you smell. You smell fantastic. Not everybody likes this, the smell of this flower. It's a little stinky, but I like it. It's a geranium. Yeah, geranium oil. Like, it is a little stinky, but it's good. It's, a, it's good. And it has um, the energy of the mother, of the goddess, of gentleness. Now, in reversed position, it can have a message or a, a feeling of unappreciated and disconnected. And you know what? That's another reminder for you to stay in the now moment. If you are accepting this moment as perfect and staying fully present and fully aware, you don't have time to slip in to ego judgment, evaluating what has been, and you know that's when you're like you don't appreciate me well you're in your mind so get in your heart take a deep breath all right let it out and get here right now and say to yourself i am most able to be nurturing and loving to those around me when I am connected to my emotions and loving to myself. You've got to love and accept yourself. You've got to heal yourself before you can help anybody, before you can love anybody. Like I learned this lesson, you know, as a mother of three children, everybody's like under the age of seven. My husband don't give a fuck about me. Nobody, the kids don't care about me, right? Because they're just being kids. You know, I felt so unappreciated. Like that nobody noticed when I did anything. Of course, I did. it was more me directing this to my husband, you know, like he really did not value my work as a homemaker or a mother. Like he just thought I was worthless because I didn't bring in any money. And that was really damaging to me and, and because it made me resentful and, you know, I got kind of grouchy. <laughs> so what I learned to do was appreciate myself. So you make, a, you make dinner, it's like in your mind, you're telling yourself thank you first 
you're telling yourself this is delicious oh my gosh I love this good job Sadie like you are appreciating yourself oh the kitchen looks fantastic this is how you're talking to yourself because you're going to just appreciate yourself first so unappreciation being unappreciated is not necessary you can appreciate yourself quit looking for outside validation one they might just not be able to because they're too little or self-absorbed or whatever it don't matter you're judging them for not appreciating you and what you could be doing instead is just staying in your own lane focusing on yourself and loving yourself and appreciating yourself and not asking anyone else to do that for you. Like you don't have to ask anybody to rub your feet when you can rub your own feet. So you don't have to ask anyone to compliment you because you know how to compliment yourself. It's really empowering. It's really good to do. It lets everybody off the hook. Then you can be more connected to your emotions. You're not looking for outside love. You've got it going on in yourself because you are loving yourself. You recognize yourself to be the goddess that you are and it really does help you get more gentle. Who more nurturing, more loving to those around you. So don't be like the rest of them, my friend. You know, yes, we could come together and we could talk about how everyone around us is neglecting us, but we know better now. We know that we can feed ourselves that love. All right, your flower is pansy with resonance. So now we're back on the pur purple vibes. We got, we got off the purple and into the pink with geranium and even your flower whispers all pink, pinky up there. Now we're back on the purple with the pansy, purple and yellow with resonance. Allow pansy to instill a sense of stability and safety in your heart and release fear and anxiety ease into an understanding of your own heart's deepest truth. Often called heart's ease pansy since only with a direct connection and resonance to your heart will you know which path leads to joyful fulfillment. So this is all about, this last pile really is all about you connecting to yourself to your emotions, loving yourself, being appreciative of yourself, understanding yourself, having direct connection, communication with yourself, resonance, and then that will keep you on your path, your path of love. Yeah, I mean, you don't wanna be this wounded, um, like, spirit all the time like oh nobody does anything for me and grouchy 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 that's not the path that you intended to be on so you want love and you want joy so even though society has set it up very easy to complain and bitch and moan all the damn time don't be like that don't be like the rest of them decide that you are going to love yourself First and foremost, you're going to appreciate yourself. You're going to understand yourself. You're going to release fear and anxiety. And you're going to give yourself the gift of stability. Like, I don't need anybody to validate anything that I do. I already know I do a good job. And I appreciate what I do. Even, I don't have to go around tooting my own horn. I can just silently silently give myself that which I need. I can give myself recognition. And this will keep me on my loving path to joyful fulfillment. All right, so you got, as your nature spirit, a rabbit. <laughs> Aww, with a message of swiftness. So yeah, don't delay on 
loving yourself. Don't delay on doing this. Keep your mind clear so that you can act with swiftness. You know, it's like, wait until you see how much headspace you free up and you clear up when you quit bitching all the time in your head about people not appreciating you. I think that's just the best example to use because everybody can relate. Like I made Henry this dinner and he didn't even say it tasted good. I don't even know if he loves me. <laughs> it's time to make a move on this girl, all right? It's like you need to make a decision and you need to make a decision now to love yourself. It is, you, will not, you will not be making a wrong decision, okay, with choosing self-love. So you're going to free up your mind. Rabbit says, do not clutter your mind with too many choices, questions, or doubt. Because if you do that, then your mind's going to be off balance. And what Pansy wants you to have is resonance. What geranium wants you to have is connection. What cheroite wants you to have is healing and connections and freedom, right? And service to the all, helping your lineages heal. You need to be the one to finally say enough. I don't care if my mom and her mom and her mom and her mom always felt like a doormat and everybody took advantage of them and nobody in the family appreciated them. Hey, I'm going to be the one to heal that for us by loving myself. By loving myself. So keep your mind clear so that you can act with the swiftness of rabbit. All right. So you want to be in that state of resonance and clarity and loving so that even if a challenging, a love challenge moment presents itself, you're in such a good space that you can swiftly respond with love and not this like uh, buildup of resentment. Like, okay, you've been, like when you get in that resentment mode, you actually become very dangerous because they don't know it, but you've been feeling unappreciated all day. And so you might react, like have a knee jerk reaction of biting their heads off. <laughs> because you didn't do the work of getting yourself into that state of self-love resonance. So anyways, do your work so that you can always respond with gentleness quickly. And your affirmation is here and now. Yeah, this this is just such a great spin-off of, you know, everything that we've said today, but also you know, rabbit too is, is very much present moment here and now, here and now. I mean, because it's looking out for danger mostly, but it does keep it in the present now moment. So here's your affirmation here and now the future does not exist and the past is gone. I focus on the present moment. I have confidence in life again because here now there is no danger. Everything happens when my soul is ready. Oh my gosh, I feel like Rose Quartz and Chara White are just like a tag team at this point. <laughs> so yeah, when your soul is ready, that's when things will happen. So get ready. Don't be like the rest of them, my friend staying in stagnancy, staying in resentment, staying in the frequency of bitching and moaning about nobody appreciating you. Be the one to rise above this into your heart space, into the direct connection with the divine. Truly, you owe it to yourself. You owe your own appreciation to yourself, your own self-love, to treat yourself like a goddess. You don't need to wait for anybody to do that. You don't need to stew about it. You don't need to think about how they didn't do it. I mean, just stay here, right here, right now. And this will, at this self-love, will instill more confidence in you. 
And yeah, I made a joke that the rabbit is like in the now moment because it's looking out for danger. And then your affirmation literally says there is no danger. <laughs> so that should lighten it up too. It truly, it truly does. Lighten up, release fear, release anxiety, get into the stability and safety of your heart. Be self-loving, self-nurturing to yourself, and then it's just going to be very, very easy to extend that out equally to all. Everything happens when your soul is ready. So get ready, bitches, by stopping a bitch. <laughs> Or at least get into a happier place and self-love and I mean hey I'm pretty much good evidence that it's hard it's hard to shake shake it off if it's if it's deeply ingrained in your personality but the thing is I can feel better anytime I want I can access my inner peace if I have the desire to do so and Damiana all week this week thank you Damiana thank you for being with us this week she really has been so seriously committed to us stepping up our self-love and our oils and our stones and our crystals and our flowers and our nature spirits and our affirmations today all confirmed justified and supported that so get ready for the experiences that your soul wants to continue to have by accepting the ones that it is currently having and it doesn't matter what you're experiencing, you can bolster yourself up with self-love and self-adoration and get it flowing in you so much that your cup does overfloweth. <laughs> and you can be that loving mother goddess that does offer gentleness, truly, because it is genuinely flowing through you. All right, so anyways, good week. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. I'm so excited to hang out with you again um, for a new herb of the week and new everything. So, but let's not think about that. Let's just stay right here, right now, and enjoy this present moment.